Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate Wickedly Smart Women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom, along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we welcome our special guest, Klana. Love and intimacy coach Klana has now been in the field of coaching, bodywork, and sexual healing for more than 10 years. She's passionate about this field because of her own struggles, feeling like a misfit for many decades, not feeling sensual, sexy, or feminine. She realized she didn't love herself. Klana works with emotional, malnourished people who want help learning to love themselves so that they can have the intimacy and joy in their life that they desire. She loves to help them bring mind, body, heart, and soul in alignment and feel confident in their own skin. And I have had the pleasure of connecting with Klana a few times in a variety of different groups that we happen to be connected with one another in. And every time I'm in her presence, I'm aware of her presence. Like she definitely holds a very powerful presence. And I'm also aware of her creative power. And so I just am really excited to bring you today to the show, Klana. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show, Angel. Oh, well, great. So I want to start our time together, Klana, just by asking what was it that caused you to kind of wake up to the fact that you didn't really love yourself? Hmm, that's a good question. (laughs) Yeah, I was all in my head the most time of my life, and it's still a quite dominant part of me. (laughs) But things changed uh, in in the meantime. Yeah, and, and things didn't flow. I didn't feel well in my skin. I didn't get relationships. And all these things, I realized, okay, one point, it just came slowly. It was not like a poof. Now I, I'm, I'm, I have it. But I realized that I don't love myself. Mm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that process. Was this something that came to you? Uh, you said it came slowly, but was there a particular like turning point in your life? Was there a particular, maybe even a story behind this story of not loving yourself? You know, was there stuff that happened in your childhood? I totally get the being all in your head because I definitely spent a lot of years in my own life all in my head. And I think culturally, women in general have been conditioned for the last several at least the last 50 years um, to be more masculinized for sure. So I'd love to see if you could tell us a little bit about like, what was that, what was that for you that, that maybe caused you to not love yourself? Do you have awareness of that? No, there are a lot of things that uh, hints that might show that there was something in my childhood because I don't have a lot of memory and back to my childhood and so sometimes it comes up again as at heart do I want to go there or shall I not go there and I, I did some psychotherapy in the 90s and nothing came up so I somehow I forgot about it and just went my my way I lived my life until my end 40s when there came the point where I said okay do I want to stay in that job for another 15 years until retirement. So here in Germany, usually you can retire with 65 or so. And uh, I said, no, this is way too boring. And at that point, I came in touch with some with coaching. And I, before, I didn't know what coaching was. Mm. And then things went really quickly. I found myself in a, in a coaching class in Ibiza, a Spanish island. 
in the Mediterranean Sea. And so I went there more often. I thought, oh, that's it. I need to have that. Even though it was not pleasant, not at all. It was really, really challenging. But my subconscious knew already that was the right path to go. And so I did something very, very bold and courageous. I quit my life in Germany, which was really, really something because I was always on the secure side of, of life. I always wanted to have it safe. Mm-hmm. And there I was, I gave everything away and I drove to Ibiza and that's where my life changed completely. So I, d- I did the training there to become myself a professional coach. And during that time, I explored myself as well. Mm-hmm. And this is how my path developed for the next decade. <laughs> Beautiful. So what caused you to actually start to focus more on the sexuality part of things? Because there's a lot of people who have a similar path, right? A lot. And I think that probably now there are even there's like another whole wave of people waking up, right? I had my spiritual awakening in the year 2000, 2001 timeframe. I I had my own spiritual awakening where similar to you, I had been 20 plus years in the real estate industry and I woke up one day and I said, I have to go. I'm going to die if I don't, if I don't leave. And it was in leaving that I actually did die to that old life for sure. So where did the sexuality piece come in for you? Was it like initially when you first got started in the coaching or was that something that matured over time? Yeah, that came over time. And that's a funny story. And I will not tell it here because for some people it might be too much. So I I discovered that I love touch. And so I made a, a training to become a masseuse. It was a special thing. It was, it's called cultural body work and it's very respectful for the body. And also we are working with the sheets so that people are always covered and you only, I think you are American, you know how it works <laughs> in Germany or especially in, in Spain. People are not so prudish. So this was something very accurate and offering these things. In Ibiza, I'm working with massage and coaching there, it developed that there was some interest for other kinds of massages. Let's say it like that. Okay. And at, at first I said, I don't do this. And then I said, why not? And so I did some research and I learned from a, another coach who was a sexological body worker. She was so excited about this, like the sexological body work that I immediately went in. And that was the second time in my life that I took a decision very, very fast and a very important decision. Mm. And I checked it out, I registered, and I said, okay, after that, now I'm in it. (laughs) And now I need to do all those things by myself and not only learn it in theory to do it with other people. Mm. And that was really, really healing for me. Yeah, that I'm, that that healing went quick. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, so just so you know, I have actually had sexological body work myself. I've experienced it uh, a few times, and every single time that I experienced it, it was immensely powerful. And I know that it seems like a a little bit of an edgy topic, particularly to anybody who's in the U.S. who's got a little bit more of a, as you mentioned, prudish kind of <laughs> mindset and conditioning. I actually grew up in New England where it's very prudish and very conditioned to shut down sexually and not even think about sex at all and certainly not think about sexological body work, which is basically a form of massage for our listeners that is in your intimate regions. You know, it's it's in your either in your vagina or your perineum or, you know, I don't know whether you do that with men or women or both, but for me it was hugely powerful and I highly recommend it. And there was so much stored. There was so much stored that I would not have been able to release otherwise that needed to be released. And so Yeah, we we don't need to go down the rabbit hole of specifically what was stored, but yeah, it's a very powerful modality. So, Klana, so as you went into sexological body work, you obviously had to do the work on yourself. 
At what point did you make the decision? Because, you know, one of the other things I really want to point out for our listeners here that you're, you're saying repeatedly is you made swift decisions from a place where you subconsciously knew that there was like this deep knowing that you had to go in that direction, even though your mind was probably screaming at you and saying, what are you doing? <laughs> right? So at what point on the journey did you start to incorporate sexological body work into your work? And can you share with us a little bit about maybe some of the client stories that you have of uh, the breakthroughs that they had, or maybe some of your own personal breakthroughs? Yeah. You know, I started immediately. It's learning by doing. I started the training at that time. Maybe things have changed over the years online. And at that time, it was not so comfortable with Zoom or something like that. <laughs> that comes in 2020. <laughs> so we uh, learned things while we read it. And then we immediately should work with people. So there was the challenge to ask people if they want to be your guinea pig. Mm. And you know what? It was so easy to find those people in Ibiza. I was really in awe. That's why I started immediately yeah. working with people. And I want to add a little bit. It's not only touch in the genital areas. And it's not only touch. You can do this with just uh, teaching people how to touch themselves. Mm. And this is especially important nowadays when we are not allowed to work with people one-on-one -on -one in um, so intimately. Uh, so it works really, really well online as well. Beautiful. And sometimes it's just talking or other kinds of breath work, body work, not in the sense of me touching somebody else. Great. I'm so glad yeah. that you clarified that. Thank you for clarifying that. When I experienced it, it was definitely the practitioner was touching my body in various intimate locations. Yeah, so, no, that, that, that is and it was that, hugely powerful and hugely beneficial. Yeah. Because as you said, in our bodies, everything, what we experience in our life or in our lives before mm -hmm. is stored in our bodies. And therefore, our body is such a beautiful and important vessel to keep sane and to clear it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> to clean it and keep it really healthy. Yeah, exactly. You floss your teeth, right? Yeah. <laughs> we probably ought to take care of flossing other places, <laughs> metaphorically yeah. speaking. All right. Yeah. So we are about to go to the break in just a moment. But what I'd really love to do is ask you, Klana, when you got those moments of having to make a decision, right? Is there a way that you knew that you knew? Like, did it come from your body? Did that knowing come from someplace in your body specifically? And if so, could you talk a little bit about what that felt like and what that experience was like for you? I'm a feeler. I, I, um, I'm an empath. And all those things I only know since a few years. Mm -hmm. Before 50, let's say, with 50 started my new life and my new awareness for all those things. And I'm now at in the next point of change because my body tells me it's time to go out with more spirituality <laughs> and with my inner knowing. And I'm still... A little bit fighting with my mind <laughs> yet even though I feel in the in my whole body that this is the right way to go and that was the same with the the other occasions I mentioned before beautiful so you're at a turning point again in your own yeah. journey that's great I love that you're on the show in that moment <laughs> really happy that you're here with us in that moment all right well we are going to take a short break and wickedly smart women we definitely could use your help if you are enjoying the show and want us to stay on the air please consider making a donation at www.wickedlysmartwomen.com I am celebrating we are a number one internationally recognized podcast and we just won 
the People's Choice Award in Podcast Awards, the 15th Annual Podcast Awards in the Business category in September on International Podcast Day. So we have a lot to celebrate and we are going to be growing our Wickedly Smart Women uh, platform, our community, and we are building a store and we have a lot of fun things in store for the year ahead. So please do consider making a donation to help support the show and to support our growth and our expansion. And uh, certainly feel free to join us in our community. We will be posting the community link in the show notes for you. And I do want to say a big thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We're welcoming thousands and thousands of downloads from all over the world. As of this past week, we are up to 52 countries. I want to shout out this week to our listeners in Bolivia, in Bosnia, and in Berlin, where Klana is. And we will be right back with Klana. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by Women in Transition, Women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance, become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your Wealthy Life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And we are back with Klana. You can find out more about her and her work, both her sexological work, her creative work, and her spiritual work as a coach, as a body worker, as a leader in self-love at her Facebook page. You can go to facebook.com forward slash klana.com. TV. And when they get there, Klana, what is going to be, what are they going to discover when they get to that page? First of all, a video which shows me in Ibiza working with clients. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, even though I'm not there anymore, I love that atmosphere there. Nice. And it's really good. Nice. Uh, so it's an invitation to do retreats with me. And what, what else you see is um, my podcast, of course. Great. My own podcast episodes, Conversations with Klana. Beautiful. And what, whatever comes up, all my, my offerings. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> you do have a podcast, so that's pretty exciting. So people can mm-hmm. tune in and listen to you at Conversations with Klana. What did they hear on that podcast? Are you having conversations with clients or are you teaching about your body of work. Tell me a little bit more about what happens when they listen to the podcast. I'm having conversations with very, very interesting uh, colleagues of mine mm-hmm. on diff- of different realms that have all to do with self-care, maybe sometimes also with sexuality, even though I need to be careful <laughs> with uh, because the broadcasters sometimes don't like that topic so much. Mm-hmm. It's about communication and relationships and how to make your life better. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So, Klana, let's talk now a little bit about you as a businesswoman, right? Because you've stepped into not only becoming a coach, not only diving into sexological body work, now you're at that pivotal point where you are being called to bring more of your spirituality out into the world. I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about your business journey, what it's been like to actually start your own business, you know, since you left some some kind of a job, some kind of a, I'm guessing a corporate career. What was that journey like for you? An adventure. <laughs> Let's say it's an adventure. <laughs> it It is the best personal growth you <laughs> training you can have 
A thousand percent. I agree with that. A thousand percent, Klana. I A long time ago, I wrote an article for a blog back when I had a different name, and I called it the twofold path of the entrepreneurial, the spiritual entrepreneur, because when you're a spiritual entrepreneur, you're having all kinds of spiritual opportunities to grow and expand and become uh, more visible and to be speaking about things that people haven't been speaking about for many, many, many centuries and, you know, really getting yourself out there. And then you're also like trying to figure out cash flow and <laughs> advertising and team management <laughs> and all the other things at the same time. So I totally hear that. So let's talk a little bit about you know, when as a business person, what do you do to incorporate more self care into your and self love into your process, both when you're working with clients? Because as a, as a practitioner, if you're not at your peak, it's going to be really hard for you to serve your clients at their peak. So from that, that perspective, but also as a business owner, like, you know, there's so many, always so many things to do that you could spend thousands of hours just like glued to the computer. So what are some of the things, if you could give our, our listeners some like immediately actionable steps that they could take to enhance their capacity to give themselves greater self-care, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah. So the most important thing I implemented is uh, some kind of a morning routine for me. So first of all, I never start before 11 a.m., <laughs> That's my personal rule. <laughs> and because I'm a night owl and I don't get up early, as most of, most other spiritual people who are into meditation, they do it very, very early in the morning. Not me. So, but I am meditating and doing just things for, for myself in the morning and uh, integrated as well is my my breakfast and all these things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then during the day, I'm listening to my body. When my body wants to sleep, I let it sleep. <laughs> when my body needs to move, I let it move. And sometimes, since I love to sit in front of my computer and work with it, you forget about those things. And from time to time, I'm really setting my timer so that I get up, I put music on, and I dance in my room for myself. Mm -hmm. This is very important. And when I get fuzzy, the best thing is sitting down and finding my breath. Mm -hmm. That's what I loved before we started the podcast here, Angel. You let us breathe. Mm -hmm. And then this is really, really the most important tool I learned over the years is the breath. When you sit there and take a few conscious breaths, you don't need much, but then you are centered, back to center. Yeah. Well, you're also present, I think, Klana. Yeah. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's not just centered, it's present. And, you, and I feel like, for me, I also feel like I am more connected with my source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. When I inspire, right, in through the nose... <sighs> out through the mouth. It's almost like tuning in on the TV. When I was a kid, we had to tune the TV a little bit because otherwise it was fuzzy. And and when I breathe in, it's like I'm getting tuned back into my channel and my uh, connection with my inspiration. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, so ladies who are listening, you know, let's take a nice deep breath together right now in through the nose. And out through the mouth. <sighs> and Klana, is there anything specific when you are breathing that you also hold? Do you hold like any kind of intention? Do you intend to, you know, or is it simply like, you know, I just want to get back to present. I want to be clear. I want to have my breath with me. Depends on the moment. <laughs> it depends on what is needed. Yeah. I love Sometimes that. it's just to cal calm myself down. Sometimes it's to get present. And, you know, 
to put the link back a little bit to the sexological body work mm -hmm. with breath you can also get to the to the other point you can get excited with your breath you just breathe in a different way a little bit fast <laughs> <laughs> i love but that still deep, but still deep you know yeah. do you want to lead us just we have a few minutes do you want to lead us in a little bit of breathing to get us to that point <laughs> Yeah, you, you, we can. You, yeah. you can. We only have a like, couple uh, minutes, but we could do a little, little bit. Ladies, are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Just like um, maybe a rhythm, like twice in, like. <sighs> and twice in through the nose and one out through the mouth. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> the people who could see me, and I see I'm getting right in my face. Yeah, so it's already starting. You get a little bit agitated in your in your uh, mind. Yeah, a little bit more yeah. energized. Energized, exactly. Yeah. So that could be one, one way, for instance. I love that. I love that. And you know, what I really love was both of us kind of got giggly, you know, within a few breaths, right? Exactly. We got giggly within a few breaths. So what I really, really love too about you, Klana, and you've shown up in this interview several times saying this, you know, for somebody recovering from being stuck in your head all the time, I think that you are really modeling well the surrender to, well, whatever's up in the moment, whatever's happening in the moment. And you're also aware of and engaging your own tools that if you want a state change, if you want to create a state change in yourself, you're engaging your own tools to do that. So it seems to me like there's this delicate balance of surrender and at some level, so I guess we'll call it sovereignty about how you actually want to feel. Am I perceiving that correctly? Yes. And thank you for that nice acknowledgement. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, we've got about a minute left. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our lady listeners before we close? Yes, the most important thing for me is listen to your body and listen to your needs and go for them. And don't do the do, 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 do thing only. Of course, you we need to do, but first be and then do. Beautiful. Well, ladies, that was your pearl of wisdom right there. First be and then do. When my son was little, I used to tell him, oh, the do monster got mommy. And I would have to like stop and we'd cuddle on the couch. And, and, and as he got a little bit older, he would, he would call me out and he would say, mom, I think the do monster has you again. <laughs> so I love that, Klana. Well, thank you so much for being here. And listeners, we love feedback. Please do let us know what you think of the show by calling into our listener line. We will have that in the show notes. We also love it when you download, rate, and review. Writing reviews is going to get your name in front of our audience. We are in the year ahead doing a lot more social media with our reviews. We're going to be putting out reviews from people who write them for us. So put your name in front of our audience by writing a great review for this particular episode. And we might even give you a shout out on the show. Thank you for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.